Hello and welcome to Project Horizon. My name's Mark. Thank you for joining in. Back in April 2021, I came across the BPS Space YouTube channel where Joe makes and designs his own TVC rocket model rockets and flies them. And instantly when I watched these, I knew I was hooked and I had to give it a go myself. Fast forward to about a year ago as I'm actively making my own rockets. Um, come to find out Joe was successful in his attempt to land his model rocket for the very first time. So huge congrats to Joe. And again, when I saw him do that, I knew this is something that I also had to get. Happy to report that in August 2023, about a month and a half ago, I was successful in that attempt as well. So as a result, I decided to make a YouTube video series chronicling how I went from step zero to actually landing my own model rocket, which is this rocket you see here, Eagle. Um, and I figured the best way to do that was to break it into three parts. And first was mock, and this is what this video will be over. The second will be Hussar, and then the final part where actually, again, landed the rocket will be over Eagle. So with mock, I wanted to keep it simple. Since I had to develop all of this new stuff that I've never done before, um, I wanted just to be able to throw it in a rocket and make sure that the TVC system somewhat controlled it and made it sure it went straight up and I was able to deploy shoots and get it back safely. So these projects revolve entirely around thrust vector control or TVC active stabilization. This is different from model rockets you see with fins, which are passive stabilization, because with thrust vector control, you actually have a computer sensing orientation and giving commands out to a gimbal in order to move that thrust around and effectively control your rocket. So in my opinion, a proper TVC project really revolves around good control of your system. And for this project, you really need to know the rocket's orientation and you need to be able to send the proper command controls. So everything else can really be built around this, but for hardware, you need good accelerometers, good gyroscopes, a proper gimbal design with servos and a flight computer to coordinate all those things together. Your software needs to be able to read the sensor data, use that to calculate orientation, and then using your PID controller, send out the proper control commands. And of course, all of that can be proven with a good simulation. For the flight simulation, I use MATLAB and Simulink. It probably saved me 50 flights worth of motors by just being able to kind of test your PID gains on uh, your system and your rocket to make sure everything's uh, flowing and working right. Um, save me a lot of time at the actual launch site because instead of just guessing gains and sending the rocket, I was able to go into the simulation, pick the values and see how they actually reacted. I used Eagle to design this flight computer. And since this was my first, I kept it really simple. And all of these sub components are on breakout boards already with the TNC 4.0 being the main microcontroller. I have an IMU and a barometer on there to gauge orientation and altitude the radio for telemetry and flash and an SD card reader to log the data. Also put in four pyro channels as well as two servo output channels in order to control the rocket. I print all my hardware using PLA and a 3D printer. Um, worked great for everything I've thrown at it. Even with some motor housings that get kind of hot, um, the PLA has always withstood everything I threw at it. Everything I design, I use uh, Fusion 360, which is a CAD software that's often packaged with Eagle, so it's pretty useful for projects like this. For the software, I wrote everything in C++ or the Arduino C++ language um, using either the Arduino IDE or VS Code. I kind of swapped to the VS Code later down the road. When building all my rockets, I just use the three inch body tubes and the corresponding coupler. I like to draw a straight line down the body tubes and mark the different drill points for the rocket, as well as opening up an access port for the flight computer and control arm windows. I'll then couple them together, add a nose cone, Add some shock cord shoots, the bulkhead feet, my gimbal, of course, and then the all important flight computer. So, I'd love to show exactly how Mach went together, but it's kind of in shambles right now for reasons. <laughs> So because I don't have any more mock rockets standing and because I kind of decided to do the YouTube thing after I launched all these rockets, I'm just going to leave you a link in the description below for the BPS-based Signal R2 videos, uh, which is what I base my rocket builds off of anyway.
So I had a lot of fun before the first flight, just developing all the hardware for it. Uh, we had to figure out things like pyro charges, um, how much to put in. Three, two, one. No. All right. How much was too much? How much was it enough? Three, two, one. With the help of my brother, we designed and built a launch pad for our purposes, which just made out of wood. We spray painted with a heat resistant spray paint, added some lights and a flame trench just for safety purposes and just kind of that cool hot rod wow factor. So with everything finally developed back in June 2022, we headed out to the launch site. first flight was phenomenal it went straight up and down and deployed the chutes nothing seemed wrong although behind the scenes just about everything was wrong it was a happy first uh, occurrence we don't we don't make mistakes we have happy accidents when we did flight two that same day it quickly became apparent that something was off um you'll notice in the video we tend to develop this kind of really aggressive wobble <laughs> And when I went into the rocket's flight log, I noticed that the data backed us up as well. You can see the orientation building and building during active flight, getting to about 20 degrees at the worst. And these angles are actually underestimated, but I'll get to that more later. And unfortunately, as we continued to launch Mach and then later on Mach 1, just due to some mishaps, we found out that the wobbliness was still there, still present. I did everything I thought I could the first month or two to try to figure that out. Um, at first, I thought it was some bad gains in the sims. So I went back to the sim, which was acting correct. Um, it was my rocket that something was off. And I tried to make the gains more aggressive, less aggressive. And more and more we flew, more and more it persisted. At this point, I started kind of getting desperate. I didn't know what was causing the wobbliness. Um, my biggest theory at the time was that my IMU was just weird and not great. Um, so at this point, I started thinking about developing a new flight computer, which I had intended to do anyway. I was also starting to suspect the servos were acting a little bit odd. I used some Amazon servos, like the cheapest of the cheap. I think it was like a pack of 20 for 15 bucks. So I thought it was either the servos, a bad IMU, um, or something in the software. And I couldn't quite pin down what was causing the wobbliness. And again, since the mock goal was already established that the rocket went up straight and um, somewhat vertical and everything was working as intended, um, the, the end goal was always to have controlled stabilization that I could rely upon. Now, to be concise, I'll talk about this more in depth in the Hassar uh, project, but we did eventually figure out what was going wrong with the stabilization and it came down to making bad assumptions. So don't assume things you don't quite understand in a project like this. And what the problem was is kind of twofold. One, you can't use just accelerometers to figure out orientation because if you just do that, I mean, you can see a lot of examples online where people are moving around Arduino boards and you'll see a 3D model on a screen following that. And that's great. And that works fine for a stationary object because the accelerometers are giving off their acceleration values. And you can use math to figure out your, your orientation due to where essentially the flight computer is figuring, or feeling gravity. Now, that doesn't work great in rockets because rockets are going to accelerate up really fast. So it's going to feel a lot more gravity or a lot higher acceleration. And that's going to really throw off your orientation calculations. In fact, your orientation, it's gonna think it's less um, pitched over to one side or the other um, than it really is. So that was one issue. Uh, issue number two is almost dumb enough to where I don't wanna tell you, but to be concise and have a good engineering report, I will tell you that 
it was just because I did not understand the PID library that I put into my software. For whatever reason, I decided to map the output of that library, which was a zero to 255 uh, units. Like that was just the output. And I thought I should just map that to zero to nine degrees. It makes no sense. Don't think too much into it. It's dumb. Um, whatever is output of that PID loop is that number. And that's the number that I needed to just give to my servos. And that's it. So basically, the rocket thought it was pitched over less than it was. And then it was sending a weak command to the servo. And that's why you get that wobble. So it's just a really weak system. So we eventually figured that out and rectified in Hasara. But just to, again, be concise, I wanted to tell you right now that was the issue. So that about wraps up the mock video. Again, our goal was just to send the rocket up vertically and hope that the TVC system somewhat controlled it. Always just meant as a proof of concept, never anything that was concrete as far as control went. The next video is going to be over the Hussar program, this guy right here. With Hussar, we really started finally working out those control bugs. And instead of the rocket going up with a wobble, it actually started going up really straight. So I'm really excited to share that with you. Thank you for watching. Leave a like or a comment below and consider subscribing. Uh, if you don't, it's totally up to you. The more subscribers I get, the more that I know if my content is useful or not and helps me push out more in the future. So on that note, have a great day. And again, thank you for watching.